Today I'm going to vent a little bit the game industry from the perspective of a technical artist. My name is Jeff and I've spent uh, quite numbers work uh, as a technical artist in the gaming industry in a lot of indie games also. So I work on Machine Zone and I contribute to numerous game titles such as Camelot in Chain, uh, Final Rock, Rock and it was a very uh, good experience. Uh, Victory Production in New York, Virago Design in also New York and yeah. One thing I want to say that my journey to become a technical artist wasn't exactly a straightforward type thing. In fact, it's a story of unexpected twists, uh, learning how on the fly and embracing challenge head on. Today, we're diving into what it meant to be a technical artist, the challenge we face and how this role is shaping the future of video game, of game development, whether you're an inspiring uh, technical artist, a game dev veteran, or just someone curious about how games are made. This is just a little bit of what I'm going to be eventing about. So yeah, in the background, you'll have a sped up uh, video. I will stop mid sentence some to explain and what I do. And mostly things from this tutorial would be things that we already covered, such as all the suspension. So if you, if you go to episode two on this tutorial, you'll see like, and then these are all recaps of what I'm doing right now. Uh, so, and then anything new that I'm doing on this tutorial, I will pause and then go on with, um, and explaining of what I, what I do. First thing first. What is exactly a technical artist? If you're not familiar with the role, it's one of those jobs that's a bit hard to define because it is it sit at the intersection of art and technology. In simple term, a technical artist is the glue that holds the art and engineer team together. We're, we're the one who makes sure that the incredible asset uh, created by artists like character, environment, and effects can actually run smooth in the game engine. This means rewrite tools to streamline workflow, optimize asset to create frame rate uh, high and, and create shaders in material that makes everything look stunning. It's a mix of coding, problem solving, and a whole lot of collaboration. Let me take a step back and share a bit about my journey. I actually started my career as a programmer. I went to school for programming with a focus of game animation specializing in language like C++, Java. I th Python was not really big at the time. I thought I was going to be writing code for game engine or tools, but my life had other plans. <laughs> my first job out of school was as an animator at a company in New York. It was a bit of a curveball, but I was excited to dive into the creative side of game development. Then one day we hit a snag. We needed a rig uh, to rig a character and no one on the team, including me, <laughs> knew how to do it. I remember thinking, well, I've got a programming background. So how hard can it be? So I volunteered to take on the task. Uh, that day turns into weeks of learning, experimenting and problem solving. And you know what? I fell in love with it. Rigging become my gateway into the world of technical artists and it ultimately shaped my career. From there, I started branching out into other area, writing tools for animators, optimizing assets, and even diving into shaders programming. It's been a wild ride, but I wouldn't trade it for anything. Of course, being a technical artist isn't all sunshine and rainbow. One of the biggest challenge we face is balancing visual quality with performance. For example, Artists might create this incredible details character model with millions of polygons, but if it brings the game to a crawl, it's our job to find ways to optimize it without sacrificing too much of the original vision. This often involves creating LODs, level of details model, baking high poly details into normal map, or even writing custom shader to fake complexity. Another challenge is communication. We're constantly translating between artists and engineer who often have very different priorities. Artists want the game to look amazing while the engineers want it to run smoothly. It's our job to find that sweet spot where everyone's happy. Let's talk about the tools we use. As a technical artist, you need to be proficient in a wide range of software in programming language. On the art side, tools like Maya, Blender, ZBrush, and Substance Painter are essential for creating an optimized asset. On the tech side, you'll need to know scripting language like Python or C++ to automate tasks and creating custom tools. And then there are game in engine like Unreal and Unity and also in-house engine, which are the heart of everything we do. Knowing how to wor work with these engines, whether it's creating material, setting up lighting, or optimizing performance, it's absolutely 
crucial. Looking ahead, I'm really excited about whether the role of technical artist is headed. Technology like real-time ray tracing, procedural generation, and AI-driven tools are opening a new possibility for what we can achieve in game. For example, tools like Udini are allowing us to create complex procedural environment that will have been impossible to build by hand. And with AI, we're starting to see tools that can automate tasks like texture and creation or even animation. But with this advancement, comes new challenges. As game becomes more visual complex, the demand for optimization and performance turning will only increase. And that's where technical artists will continue to play a crucial role. If you're listening to this and thinking about becoming a technical artist, here's my advice. Start by building a strong foundation in both art and programming. You don't need to be an expert in both, but having a solid understanding of each will set you up for success. Next, get hands-on experience. Work on personal projects, contribute to open source tools, or collaborate with others on game jam. The more you can showcase your ability to solve real world problems, the better. And finally, don't be afraid to ask questions or seek out mentors. The game industry is full of talented people who are usually more than willing to share their knowledge. Learning from others is one of the best ways to grow in this field. All right, so I rename all the objects so it's easier for me to win whenever I'm doing the Whenever I'm doing the expression, it's easier for me to uh, know which object is which. So, um, doing it with the with the operation, uh, and it didn't work in my favor. Um, just not the way I want, and I would have to use the a uh, lot of um, the average range uh, pair with the multiplier. I mean, multiply divide, and it's and even like uh, the A and B uh, range. Like it's it might uh, take a long time to get to something where I need, but uh, we can do all this and uh, via the expression and it's uh, way easier and it's transferable so we can just like if we wanted to go pack it and leave uh we can do that when i when i mean when i meant by that it's kind of like you know duplicated with connection and that would actually carry on so let's go ahead and get uh some expression going um i'm gonna go with the new expression and so let's go let's bring mm, left foot i can actually uh do it right under right here mm. I might have like more expression in, into you know spring. Alright, so what we want to do, we wanted to get the distance. We already know the distance. So uh this is the distance we're looking for. Oops. This distance right here. This distance right here. So we're going to get that distance. So let's select it. And this one we for it. So alright. Where the distance is, which is right here. <coughs> now, since we have the distance, so uh, we wanted to pretty much fluctuate between uh, between negative and one and one. So we're going, to, we're going to be end up using either cosine or cosine. It depends on what the look that we uh, that we look for. So just like float again. Oh, normalize. Which will be the distance that we already declare. So, ten. All right. So the exact same operation that we did when we divided the multiplier ten by ten equals one. So we wanted to make sure the distance, the distance that we have, we divided by itself. And then, uh, and now we can assign um, all the mesh compressors. So right here, all the mesh compressors into a cosine. I mean, it's cosine sine. Um, it depends on like I probably will uh, see which which is. Uh, better actually. So, I'm just gonna go ahead and start with this. And let's just call it one. And then, the uh, one I need is actually translate. Make sure it comes like zero. And so we're gonna work with zero, which is this one I believe. Yep, zero. Yeah. It's fine. So uh, what we need is the normal, uh, normalized value. Okay. 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 Let's test it out. 
I hope we don't have any. Yep, we do have. Uh, it, it does give us uh, some value. So let's see exactly what it's going to do. Nice. Cool. Um, can, I might not want it to go too far. It's still going to be some value. So, we might want to tweak um, this value right here because it will give us the value of one um, and so since we're going to cosine it will give us a value of uh, one and negative one so if we look here this is the value that we have we can go to i believe uh, the graph editor so this is the value and usually it shows you usually it shows you like we try to turn on everything. Hmm. Usually it gives you a value uh, for it, but for some reason it's not giving me any uh, any of the value from. Um, although you couldn't do anything to it, it's just it's just there for uh, it's just there for visual. But anyway, let's uh, start plugging everything in, and we can reduce those values there. Can I see first? Okay, so let's uh, do the math real quick, just to see if I can get a close number to what I'm look to what I'm looking for. Um, this one is good. I kind of want it to stop right around here, so it should be a point six, um, point six. So let's see. What is this one going? I'm going to round it to 16. Right, so it takes uh, 196 uh, um, uh, 10 divided by 10. So that would be, um, so if you remember Panda, that uh, would be 19 uh, divided by 10, and also 10 divided by 10 plus 1. So then we could just say uh, minus 1. So that is the result that it gave us. So right here. So now, uh, because it uh, uh, cosine, cosine, so it's fluctuate between these uh, this this number right here. So what we can do, uh, we can even like uh, decrease the number even lower. We can either multiply by two or even multiply by uh, three. So uh, we multiply by uh, so the uh, uh, pi uh, pi number, and that actually gives us a really pretty good idea of what we want to do. So at the same time, we do not want it to equals to that. Uh, so let's just uh, let's just try to see if we can reduce this to even like like five. Um, so we could uh, say. I'm going to try to get a nice number this time. So it'll give us a really nice one. 19. Uh, 6. And divided by. So we've got our lower number. We have a lower number that uh, could be uh, easier for us. Uh, it's 1. So we should have a like 8 ish. So we're going to try uh, with 11, what 11 is going to give us. And I've got copy everything. And so you can see 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, until 1. And if we just. Which one did I make a mistake? Alright. Oh, we're not doing anything at all. Anyway, so. Now we have a nice uh, compressor. Even though it's going. I might not like the way. The way compressed, but so far, I like it. And let's try from the bottom. Yep. Good. Okay. Now that we have um, all compress compressor in, we have a compressor. We have a spring. So now we're ready to just manipulate it the way we want, and also kind of uh, duplicate it for each one. So we know, like, we're always gonna get the exact same thing. So uh, we could do we could do that. And since it's it is using the um, expression, we might 
have to rename these just to make sure that uh, the expression that we're using and it's perfect. And I am going to be combining these guys to make sure that it is duplicated with the entire thing. So, all right, so we're gonna take our group. We should have. We can take, uh, well, that is it for today. I hope you enjoy my ripping into the world of technical artists. If you have any question or topic you would like me to cover in the future episode, feel free uh, to reach uh, out to me or leave a comment. Don't forget to subscribe. You don't miss out on future episodes where we'll continue to explore the art, tech, and magic behind game develop. Thanks, thanks for tuning in. And until next time, keep creating and keep pushing the boundary of what possible. This is Jeff. See you later.